So all this craziness going on in GameStop? What the fudge is happening? I have no idea. Hey, Jim Schultz here with you guys for F Cubed. So the basics of what is going on, to put it very simply, guys, this is just a good old fashioned country whooping. Also known as a short squeeze in the world of finance. So the basic idea is this. You've got GameStop, right? It's a company that's been riding the brink of bankruptcy for the better part of a decade. You even have other very well-run companies looking at the situation, like, you know, Blockbuster, Family Video, Redbox. They're like, yeah, it's any day now. But to better illustrate exactly what's going on, let's use Finding Nemo. Let's use our Finding Nemo DVD here to represent one share of GameStop stock. Now, for the longest time, right, for five, seven, nine, ten years, right, Finding Nemo was just kind of hanging around $8 a share, maybe $10 a share, just kind of doing its thing, you know, barely above solvency, and nobody really thought anything of it. Well, a bunch of big guys, right, big banks, hedge funds, institutions, right, big players, they came into the marketplace and they said, you know, Finding Nemo, it's not worth $10 a share. We think it should be $8 a share. We think it should be $6 a share, right? We obviously don't have children. We think it should be $0 a share. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take all of our shares of Finding Nemo and we're going to sell them. We're going to get rid of those shares, gone, like we never even had them. But that's not enough. We're also going to go to our broker and say, hey man, can I borrow some shares of Finding Nemo from you? Can I borrow some copies of Finding Nemo from you? I would like to sell those copies of Finding Nemo in the open marketplace. I'll give them back to you. Like, I'll replace the shares at some, you know, later date. But right now, just on an act of good faith, can you help a brother out? Can you loan me some copies of Finding Nemo? And so they did that. They grabbed a copy of Finding Nemo. That's not even theirs. They grabbed another copy of Finding Nemo. That's not even theirs. They grabbed another copy of Finding Nemo. That's not even theirs. They got all their friends together and everybody sold all these copies of Finding Nemo. Sell after sell after sell after sell. So after this process was repeated over and over and over again, everybody primed, everybody ready for GameStop to completely collapse. Finding Nemo to be lost forever. These guys got an even brighter ideal. They were like, hey, wait a second. Wait a second. Let's use the options market. Let's lever up to the hilt, right? Let's get all these option contracts right here where we only need a fraction of the capital of the contract to control, you know, tens of hundreds of thousands of tens of thousands of Finding Nemos. Let's short those too. Let's bet on those guys going to zero. Because when this thing finally goes to kaputs, we're going to be styling. When this thing finally goes to insolvency, we are going to be all set. All right, so all is well in the world of short selling. All is well in the world of stomping on GameStop and sending it down to zero. But then all of a sudden, the plot takes an unexpected twist. Enter a group known as Wall Street Bets. A group over on Reddit, guys, girls, maybe a milli, maybe two milli strong, they love GameStop. They love everything about GameStop. They love Zelda. They love Mario Brothers. They love Final Fantasy. They're like, no, no, no. You're not sending this stock down. Not on our watch. So they start to buy it. And they tell their friends to buy it. And their friends tell their friends to buy it. And all of a sudden, in the first ever pyramid scheme to ever hit the stock market, you've got people buying GameStop. You've got people selling Tupperware. They're doing all of it. And the stock starts to gain a little bit of traction. And then all of a sudden, the stock isn't 10 anymore. It's 25. It's 35. It's 45. It's 75. And all those big boys from the beginning, those hedge funds, those institutions, or all those big players, all those shorts, they're feeling a little bit of pain. Right? They're jimmies. They're getting a little rustled. So what do they do? They double down. They borrow more shares and they sell them. They get into more option contracts and they sell them to push that stock price lower. But all those degenerates that they euphemistically refer to themselves as on those Reddit groups in the Wall Street bets, they just view that as a buying opportunity. They just say, hey, buy the dip, boys and girls. 
Let's do this. And the next thing you know, they're stronger than ever and the stock starts to skyrocket. So they buy boatloads and this sends the stock soaring. So everybody in the beginning that was short GameStop, the hedge funds, the institutions, the everyday mom and pop that were betting on the demise of the legend of Zelda, they're feeling the pain. They're feeling the pinch. So finally they just say, you know what? It's over. We've got to cut our losses. Well, the only way out You've got to close those option contracts. You've got to buy back those shares and return them to your broker. So what happens when you do that? You have to go into the marketplace and you have to buy shares of GameStop. Your enemy, your arch nemesis, right? You're not buying shares to own the stock. You're not buying shares because you believe in the future of the company. You're buying shares to close out your short position. And what happens? That sends the stock even higher. So now it's gone from stratosphere to stratosphere to stratosphere. And that is how GameStop can go from 10 to 250 to 500. So that is what happened in GameStop. Just a good old fashioned Cracker Barrel style beatdown also known as a short squeeze. So that's it, guys. If you guys like this video, man, hit it with a thumbs up. You know, share this video with a friend. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you're a brand new. And uh, that's it. I will see you guys next time.